fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof feet of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Hooray! Sheriff Johnson was closing his office in the town of Greenville and going home for the night. As he started to blow out his lamp, he heard hoofbeats galloping toward him and he went to the door. A man on a big white horse pulled up before the building. Ho, oh, Silver. Ho, oh, oh, oh. Well, it's you, the Lone Ranger. Get back to the office, office quick. Something the matter? Something's the matter, all right. This. playing cards with us, Doc. It looks as if he could use a doctor. Uh, he's been shot. Right through the heart. He's dead, boys. Dead. Well, who could have done it? Hey, that was a murder, I'll bet. The man on the white horse with a mask. Uh, what's wrong? Is it my dad? Sorry, son. Yes, it's your father. Somebody killed him. Uh, killed him? Uh, what? Who? Oh, how did he... We heard shots and saw a man riding away from here in a white horse. He's wearing a mask. Uh, oh, that sounds like it. Oh, no. No, it couldn't have been. What were you about to say, Steve? Uh, he was my dad's best friend. He couldn't have been the one. Not the Lone Ranger. Well, I heard him yell to his horse. He called him Silver. Are you sure? Sure. That's not possible. Is that the name of his horse? Uh, yes, but Come on, still... boys. Get your horses. We're going after him. We'll get him, the murdering coyote. I'll stay here with you, Steve. Thanks, Doc. Sit down, son. It's a pretty bad shock. Yeah. It sure is. Look, right beside you there. There in the wall. The boards are splintered. That's the bullet that killed your father. <laughs> Went clean through it. I can't believe the Lone Ranger could have done there. this. There's the bullet. It wasn't in the wall very far. Now, let me see it. Your father certainly didn't expect to get shot. He hadn't even drawn his gun. Doc. Huh? The Lone Ranger didn't commit this murder. How do you know? Look at this bullet. It's lead. Well, son, all bullets are lead. No, no, not the ones he uses. He told my dad he uses silver ones. 
There's never been anyone killed with a silver bullet. How do you know so much about him, son? Well, three years ago, he helped my poor capture a murderer. He told him about the silver bullets then. Mm-hmm. The man they captured tried to kill my dad. Lone Ranger shot him in the arm and saved my dad's life. Well, that ain't much proof, son. He could have used another gun. But Doc, he had no reason to shoot Dad. Not after... Doc, look. What is it? This telegram here on Dad's desk. What's it say? It says... Rance Mason escaped two days ago. What's that got to do with He's this? the man my paw arrested. He's the man the Lone Ranger shot in the arm, Rance Mason. And he tried to pin this murder on the Lone Ranger. In a small cabin on the outskirts of town, a woman paced the floor nervously. Her anxious expression looked strangely in contrast with her gay dancing dress and painted face. She stopped suddenly as she heard a light tap on the door. Who is it? It's me, Rance. Open the door. Rance, it's really you. Shut the door quick. Rance. Put something over that window. Hurry. Gee, Rance, I was so scared. I, I expected you last night. Does anybody know we're married? No, I, I never told you know that. Well, that's good. I was afraid they might be watching you. Oh, Rancy, it's so good to see you. Stow it, I... kid. We got business to talk over in a hurry. But aren't you glad to see me? Sure, sure I'm glad. I couldn't have escaped if you hadn't helped. I did everything you told me to. Came here to Greenville and got a job singing and dancing in the cafe. I got this cabin way out here by myself. People think I'm crazy living here alone like this. Did you tell him your grandmother was coming to live with you? Yeah, but I don't know why you wanted me to say that. I didn't have time to tell you the whys of anything when you visited the jail. Did you get the old lady's clothes? Yeah, I got them. But if you're planning to have your grandmother live with us, I... <laughs> oh, that's what I like about you, Lou. You're so dumb. <laughs> Get the clothes. I'm not getting anything until you tell me what this is all about. Get the clothes, I said. I'll tell you while you're doing it. All right, Rance, don't get mad. But I thought we was going away together right away. I'm going. You're staying right here. I'm staying right here? Well, if you think... Stow it, will you? I'm coming back. Get the clothes. They're here in this box. Now, listen. I'm getting out of here tonight. But I'm coming back in two days on the stagecoach. Well, Rance, they'll be looking for you. You can't do that. They're... Will you keep still for a minute till I finish? All right, Rance. Don't get mad. You spread the word around that you're meeting your grandmother. She's coming out here because she's sick. Rance, you don't mean to tell me that you're going to dress in them clothes. Well, so there's a brain under them dyed curls that works once in a while. But to come right back to the place where you were arrested... Are you going to stay here? It's the last place they'd look for me. I'll stay here till they're sick of looking. Now, you'll be there to meet the stage. I'll catch it at Era Junction so they won't know which way I came. That's where the stage lines meet. I'll pretend I came on the stage from the east. But, Rance, they'll know you're a man. Did you get that heavy veil? Yes, but your voice... I got that fixed. You tell everybody there's something wrong with my throat. I'll have it wrapped up. I won't be able to talk. Tell them that's why I'm coming here. Gee, Rance, I don't think... I know you don't, kid. You're not equipped for it. Just let me do the thinking and you do what I say. It was two days later... The Overland stage rumbled out of the town of Greenville carrying one passenger, Dan Reed. About five miles out of town, the stage driver halted. Whoa, whoa there. Hold up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, kid. This is the place you want to get out? This is it, Buck. Thanks a lot for stopping. <clears throat> Say, remember that old woman you left, left off in Greenville? Sure. Fine-looking old thing, wasn't she? She forgot her purse. It's here. Well, concern it. I can't take it back to her. Five miles out of town. I'll take it back for you. I'm going in tomorrow. Would you do that for me, kid? Sure appreciate it. You don't know her name, do you? No. She couldn't talk on account of her sore throat. But I noticed that new entertainer met her at the stage. She works at the Roundup Cafe. Her name is Lou. I heard her call the old lady grandma. I'll find out where she lives and get the purse to her. Much obliged, kid. Say... 
You sure somebody's going to meet you out here? It's a mighty lonely spot. Yes, I'll be here. Thanks a lot for bringing me out this far. My ticket just went as far as Greenville. Well, I'm glad it did. Saved me worrying about that purse. Get up there. Get up. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Hello, Tano. I didn't know you were behind that rock. Oh, damn. We wait back a rock until stage go. Hello, Dan. How are you, Good. sir? Fine. And Victor, old boy. Steady, fellow. Hey. Gee, it seems good to get on a horse again. Did you have a nice trip? Fine. <laughs> this isn't a present for you. It's a purse that a funny old lady left on the stage. She got off at Greenville. All right, Silver. Come on, fellow. Hey, come on, get along. Get him off the car. Get along. Do you know who the old lady is? No, I don't. She was the only other passenger from Arrow Junction to Greenville. Something was wrong with her throat and she couldn't talk. <laughs> Must have been dull for you. <laughs> I got one good laugh, though, out of it. She was, uh, she thought I was asleep once and lit a cigarette. She took one puff of it and almost set her veil on fire. Can you imagine an old woman like that smoking? With a sore throat. <laughs> I didn't want to embarrass her, so I pretended to go right on sleeping. Uh, where did she get the cigarette? <laughs> I guess she was an old hand at smoking. She even rolled it with cotton gloves on. Say, aren't we going in a different direction from our camp? We moved camp, uh, Dan, farther back in the hills. We moved our camp? Why? Well, uh, Sheriff Johnson was shot and killed a few nights ago. The man on the white horse did it. He uh, wore a mask like mine. Otto brought me the news. Golly, does the law suspect you? The killer hoped that would be the case. You were a good friend of the sheriff, weren't you? Yes, Dan. I helped him capture a man once. Sheriff was a fine man. I intend to find the killer. I wish I could help. Perhaps you can. See, people in town don't know you, Dan. I want you to get information for me. Now, uh, young Steve Johnson, the sheriff's son, can give it to you. I want you to go into town tomorrow and see him. Good. I'll return this purse while I'm in town. Well, uh, Tano can go with you and take that purse to the old lady while you talk to Steve. Rance Mason tossed the hat and veil into a corner of Lou's cabin and began to unwind the bandage around his throat. Throw me a cigarette, Lou. These clothes are just about set me crazy. I hope nobody noticed anything. <laughs> yeah, we fooled the town all right. They all thought I was your grandmother. I was so scared I was shaking. Nothing to be scared of. There was, and you know it. What are you talking about? The night you came here, Sheriff Johnson was murdered. Yeah. Rance, you didn't do it, did you? You wouldn't murder a man in cold blood like that. Didn't anybody see who'd done it? They said it was a man on a white horse wearing a mask. They chased him out of town but couldn't pick up his trail in the dark. Sounds like the hombre they call the Lone Ranger. Maybe that's what you wanted them to think. You could have done it. You could have circled around and come back to town. Come here. I wouldn't strain that brain too much. It might not be healthy for you. Rance... If you did do it, let's get away now. Why do you want to stay here? Listen, Lou. Might as well tell you so you'll quit bothering me. I've got a score to settle. But the sheriff... He was only part of it. The reason I went to that stinking jail was on account of a man with a big white horse. He was the reason I got caught. But you already got even with him. If people think he killed the sheriff, the law will get him. The law won't get him. Nobody could find him unless he wanted them to. Then why did you dress like him? Because if he finds out about it, he'll be here. I don't care what the town thinks. I'm going to get him if I have to swing for it. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The following morning, Dan and Tonto rode up to the Roundup Cafe. As they entered, Tonto stood at the door while Dan talked to the proprietor. Have you a girl working here by the name of Lou? Yep, she comes here at night, though. She's home right now. But <laughs> she's a little old for you, ain't she, son? <laughs> I'm looking for someone even older than she is. Her grandmother. Her grandmother? And here I thought she was just being romantic. Well, yeah, Lou's grandma's staying with her. They live out north of town, that last cabin just before the road forks. What do you want her for? She left her purse on the stage yesterday. Mm. Maybe I could just leave it here. Well, I'd rather you didn't do that, son. This place ain't safe or nothing like that lying around. Oh, I see. Well, all right, I'll take it to her. Uh, I hear you had a killing in town this week. Yeah, that was mighty mysterious. Lots of people think a fellow they call the Lone Ranger done it. But young Steve Johnson, he's the sheriff's son, swears he knows he didn't. Oh, really? How does he know? Oh, some crazy yarn about a silver bullet or something. Don't make sense to me. Uh, there goes Steve now. See through the window there? Yeah. He's going into the barbershop. Mm -hmm. Ask him about it if you're interested. Thanks. Maybe I will. Well, Jess, what'll it have? Tano, will you take this purse out to that cabin for me? I want to talk to the sheriff's son. Oh, me do it, Dan. I'll meet you where I hitch Victor. <laughs> Rance Mason paced the floor of the cabin restlessly as Lou watched him anxiously. I wish you'd sit down, Rance. Pacing back and forth like that gets on my nerves. It's like being back in prison again. Wait until it gets dark. It was your idea, wasn't it? Tonight I'll go into town and... What's wrong? Why are you looking out the window? Is somebody coming? Maybe I won't have to go to town. Yes, it's him. You mean the masked man? Why, that's an Indian. An Indian? It's the Indian. He's the one who's always with the masked man. He's the one who helped him when he caught me. I'd know him anywhere. And that horse of his. Hey, you better hide, Rance. Maybe he's coming for you. I can't see what we'll bring him here. Please, I'm... Rance, hide. He's coming to the door. You answer it. I'll stand right here and hit him with this gun butt when you open it. But, Rance, I... Answer it, I say. Yes? Now, me bring... Oh. Oh. He didn't know what hit him. Come on, Lou. Help me get him in here. Oh, Rance. I hope you didn't kill him. What's that in his hand? It looks like a... <laughs> what are you laughing at? It's a pocketbook I left on the stage yesterday. Don't you recognize it? Why, it is. But how did he get it? I don't know. And I don't care. Oh, this is the best piece of luck I've had yet. I'll make him tell where that masked man is... If I have to skin him piece by piece to do it. But, Rance, his friend is liable to come looking for him. That'd be even better. If he comes looking, he'll find a lot more than this Indian waiting for him. Come on, Lou. Help me get him in here. Get some rope to tie him up. And lead that horse down beside the creek and hide him. the horse? Yes. I took him down beside the creek. He's in a clump of trees tied to one of them. Good. Nobody went by. I saw you. No, nobody. The Indian come to yet? He's just starting to... Oh, he's going to be surprised. Oh. Oh. Come on, Indian. Wake up. Rains, don't hit him. You keep out of this. Say nothing to what you're going to see if you won't talk. Come on, wake up. Yes. Open your eyes. I want you to see who's got you. Remember me, Indian? Remember when you and the masked man caught me? Uh, me remember? You, Mason? Yeah. Rance Mason. Now you're going to do a little paying for all the time I rotted in jail. And it won't be funny. <laughs> Except for me. Where did you get this purse? I'll do the question, Lou. Well, you better find out or someone's liable to come looking for him. Lou, will you shut up? All right, Rance, don't get mad. 
the stage driver give you this purse to bring here? Well, what does that mean? There's a stage driver in town. Oh. Now we're getting somewhere. Nobody knows he's here. Ah. I could kill you right now, Indian. But I want some information from you. Where's the mask man? Uh, he not know. <coughs> Maybe that'll help you remember. Throw some more water in his face, Lou. I'll make him talk. Rance, you've been doing this for an hour. I can't stand it anymore. You keep your nose out of this. Yeah, Rance. All right, Indian. <coughs> We're going to start all over again. Rance, someone's coming. Look out and see who it is. It's a kid on a white horse. He's stopping here. I'll throw a blanket over this Indian. I'll hide behind the curtain over the clothes closet. See what he wants. Hello, kid. What do you want? Did an Indian bring a purse out here that belonged to your grandmother? Why, no. What do you know about her purse? Well, I was on the stage with her yesterday when she forgot it. I gave it to him to bring out here. Well, them Indians are thieves. He probably kept it. Don't worry about it, though. There wasn't anything valuable in it. Well, I'm sorry. Thanks for trying anyway, kid. Goodbye. Get up, Victor. He's gone, Rance. Oh, you'll always be dumb. Why didn't you say the Indian had left the pocketbook here and gone? Well, what's the difference? He's liable to tell the sheriff. And he'll question us about it. Oh, you're crazy. I told him there was nothing in it. The other way would have been safer. Get some more water. I'm bringing that redskin back to life again. Impossible. Dan Reed rode back to the Lone Ranger's camp as fast as Victor could gallop. The masked man stood waiting as Dan leaped from the back of the heaving horse. Oh, 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 my. Oh, oh, Victor. Steady, buddy. Steady. What's wrong, Dan? Plenty. Tano's in trouble. Tano? I saw Steve Johnson today. He says a man by the name of Rance Mason escaped from prison, and he thinks he's the one who killed his father. Rance Mason. Yes, I remember him. Steve says he figures that he killed the sheriff and tried to frame you because you captured him. What about Tano? He went to deliver the old lady's purse while I talked to Steve. Yes, he didn't come back, so I went out to the cabin to look for him. Oh. There were fresh tracks of a horse leading into the place. And I noticed moccasin tracks where Tano got off his horse. In front of the cabin? Yes. But when I asked the woman there if he had brought the purse, she said he hadn't been there. Did they know that Tano's a friend of yours? No. I just said an Indian. The woman said not to worry about the purse. It wasn't valuable. You said nothing about the tracks? No. The whole thing looked funny, and I didn't want them to get suspicious. Mm. Did you see the old woman? No. The young one just opened the door a crack. I couldn't see inside. I got thinking about that old lady smoking that cigarette on the stage. And she was big. Do you think... It could have been Rance Mason. He'd remember Toto because Toto helped me capture him. Come on, Dan. We can't waste any time. But, but you can't ride in the daylight. Steve said everybody's looking for you. They don't believe Steve. And lots of people think you're the killer. We can't wait till it's dark, said Silver. Rance may be torturing Toto. We've got to get to that house without being seen. You he can't do it in the daylight. They, they could see you coming for a mile. We'll have to think of something as we ride, steady big fella. Easy. Steady boy. Come on, Silver. Get up, Victor. Dan, down there on the trail. A wagon. What happened? Just what we need. What do you mean? A peddler's wagon. We'll borrow it. Come on, Silver. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh, oh Victor. Stop oh, that oh, wagon. Oh. Right up. Don't shoot. Don't shoot, mister. See how high you hold up my hands? I'm only a poor peddler. We're not going to hurt you, but I'm going to borrow your wagon for a while. Get out. Why should you take my wagon? Don't argue. Get out of that seat, silly big fellow. Dan, you lead Silver and bring the deputy from town. But don't come to the cabin until I'm inside. Shall I keep this man covered? No, he's harmless. Here, you, I want your cap. My cap? But it has a hole in it. It's all I have. I can pull it down over my eyes. You can walk to town, mister. Your wagon will be there. Get it back. Come on, fellas. Come on. I'll give you one last chance, Indian. 
You gonna tell me where I can find the masked man? Or do you want a bullet in your head? Uh, me? Not uh... Rayans, you can't kill him here. Why not? The masked man will probably start looking for him. And that's just as good. Give me that gun, Lou. But Rayans... Give it to me, I... I said, or do you want me to All get... All right. Listen. You can't shoot now, Rance. There's someone coming. Who is it? Look out the window. It's a peddler. It's old Jake. He has pans and thread Well, and... get rid of him. Tell him you don't want anything. Well, you better hide. He can't see me if you don't open the door wide. I'll cover up this Indian. Never mind. I'll hold this gag in his mouth. Answer it. And get rid of him. I don't want anything today. I... Oh! Take your foot out of that door. Rance, he's mad. Don't move, Rance. Stop! Why, you... Stop that gun! No! Rance! Stay away from that gun, lady. Stay away from Rance. You can fix that arm of his later. Toto, are you all right? Uh... All right, Lou. Untie that Indian. And hurry! Yes, sir. You little fool. How could you let him ride right up here in that wagon? Right under our nose? Well, I didn't look at him. I looked at the wagon. It was covered. Uh, you're so dumb. Are you all right, sir? Yes, Dan. Did you bring the horses? Yes. The deputy's following me from town. Good. Otto, you know where your horse is? Nim Fay, beside the creek. Can you walk, fellow? Oh. Where's the deputy and his men now? Quiet. Oh, yes. oh, this is the place, all right. Yeah, there's the two white horses. This is it. Stay right where you are, Rance. Why, why, it's the masked man. It's him, all right. He's the one we're after. Just a minute, deputy. I may be the one you're after, but this man is the man you want. Rance Mason. Rance Mason, he escaped convict. Yes, he's your killer. And who is this woman? I didn't have anything to do with it. I didn't even know he was going to kill the sheriff. Oh, will you keep your mouth shut? Well, not if it means going to jail for murder. I told you that's what happened. Rance tried to pin my paw's murder on the masked man. The whole thing should be clear now. You take over, deputy. Come along, Dan. I sure will take over. And thanks for helping us. Come on, Tonto. Stand right there, Rance. Lou, you're the dumbest woman I ever saw. Yep, Rance. I guess you're right. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be mad to you. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 